And even as the song they sing, you know, we need a word in this hour. And I don't care what nobody is telling you, what people are telling you, what their opinions are, giving you suggestions, looking on the internet for information. We need the word of the Lord. Amen. So I pray that you would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And that just believing the word of the Lord, that I'm healed by the hearing of the word. I'm delivered by the healing of the word. I'm set free by the healing of the word. And so by the hearing of the word, receive Pastor Ernest. So dear Father, we thank you for this grand place that we're in right now where we can hear you speak hear what you have to say and father i pray that earnest will decrease you increase have your way speak into our lives what we need to know and what we need to understand so that we may be able to live by your word not just be excited by your word but to live by your word each and every day of our lives and we thank you for it in jesus name we pray thank god amen one more hand clap of praise and you may be seated God bless you. You may be seated. What an incredible worship experience that we're having on today. Uh, please do not forget some of you that are recent joinees of the church that will be having that fellowship dinner today at 3 o'clock, I believe, or immediately after service, whatever time it's going to be. Um, but please, we look forward to fellowshipping with you and joining with you and just uh, uh, getting to know you because this, the Bible says, know them that labor among you. And so we want to make sure that we know each and every one. And let me mention this as well as on the top of my head that next month, the last Sunday of the month, we're going to have a ministry fair. We have a goal of getting 50 of you, at least minimum of 50 of you involved in ministry. Maybe you have not gotten to the mainstream of our church or gotten involved in ministry in our church in whatever capacity. And we're going to have a ministry fair where our ministry leaders are going to be presenting their ministries to you and uh, letting you know we, how you can get more information and all these types of things. Because we want you involved in what we're doing. This is what I believe. I believe that if you're involved in the church, it becomes your church. If you just come to the church, then it's just our church, okay? I want it to be your church. And so we want you involved. And we'll be talking to you more and more about that as the days approach. Um, my daughter, uh, she's heading up the uh, committee, getting everything together, the commercials and all that other kind of stuff. Uh, where my daughter at? Stand up so they can see you, girl. Stand. Yeah, that's right. I just felt like doing that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all clap. Y'all. Y'all clapping for my daughter. Don't make me come down there. No, I'm just joking. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Give it up for Pastor Cynthia as well. Thank God for her. Amen. Would you appreciate, would you appreciate one of my friends? Where, where he at? Superintendent Wiggins over here. God bless you, sir. Amen. From Wilmington, North Carolina. God bless him. And I see Ann Reed. I see Annette Reed. Amen. Praise God for them. Let's clap for all of them on today. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good and we appreciate the goodness of the Lord listen get your Bibles I'm, uh, I'm uh, just hey these 20 year olds have done a phenomenal job today I just want to say that these these 20 year olds these 20 year olds are doing a phenomenal job and I'm gonna say I'm gonna keep on saying it okay I know this this is y'all third performance is that what it is performance ministry I'm sorry I didn't mean to upset y'all talk to deep folk if we don't do performances okay i'm sorry um the rest of y'all young folk in your 20 y'all need to y'all need to get with them they about to they about to do something up in here y'all better get with them don't wait too late okay don't wait too late all right um if you need to know more information shonda stand up and wait a minute before she stand up don't after she stand up don't nobody say stand up because i know how y'all are all right shonda stand up all right there she is y'all get with shonda all right it seemed like all y'all can sing. I mean, I'm just listening to all y'all. Everybody get a mic, sing. Just sing like all. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Get your Bibles. We're going to go to the 119th Psalm. We're going to go to the 119th Psalm. I began a series of messages, and we thank God we out of the last series. Um, I began a series of messages on this morning, our 8 o'clock service called Word Power word 
power, word power. And we're looking at the, the power of the word, how it relates to us and our lives and the effect that the word has upon our lives. I, I want you to understand that there's one thing, it's not the only thing, but there's one thing that the devil is sure enough after in the church, he's after the word. He wants to take the word out of the church because he understands, I just heard Tony say, she just now said that if you know the truth, the truth makes you free. And so he doesn't want us to know the word or get the word because he understands that every time we know the word and get the word it has an effect upon our lives and so that's why he's so after the word he doesn't want us to know the word that's why when you try to read your bible you get sleepy and all of the other kind of stuff and barely can keep your eyes open it's 11 o'clock in the morning i mean come on now that doesn't make any sense there's 11 o'clock in the morning you can't read y'all all right over there everybody okay and, and you can't read your word and so the devil is after he's after the word because he understands the power and effect of the word that the word has on our lives as i said on the morning this morning i am what i am by word power word spoken over me word that i picked up word that god impressed into my spirit i am what i am by word power and matter of fact you are what you are by word power because not only does god create by his word but he sustains by his word and the reason why you are still here is because God sustained you by his word when the devil would speak against you the God would speak for you and you have been sustained by the word the reason why you are the head and not the tail is because God speaks that over you the reason why you are above only and not beneath is because God speaks that for you and so we are what we are by word power there is power in the word of God and that's why the devil is trying to take it from us because he understands that that there is power in the word of God and so we, we, that's what we're talking about and that's what we're dealing with so Psalm 119 Psalm 119 verse 25 Psalm 119 verse 25 New Living Translation as we kind of read around here New Living Translation Psalm 119 verse 25 uh, the song writer says I lie in the dust I lie in the dust revive me by your word I lie in the dust revive me by your word anybody need to be revived then is anybody here need to be, okay well let me tell you how revival comes revival comes by the word coming into your life there, there is nothing that the word cannot deliver us from there is nothing that the word cannot set us free from there is nothing that the world cannot bring us out of so the songwriter here says i lie in the dust but if i can just get a word i can be revived out of the dust i can come out of what i am i can be delivered from what i am my family can change my status can change everything about me can change because if i get a word it just changes everything that's why when i come to church i need somebody to give me a word i i, I you know i love the i love the entertainment i love to be entertained and everything else don't don't get it twisted we love entertainment in the church don't get all deep on me we love to be entertained and we love to you know to feel the spirit and everything but we have to ensure that we get a word i need to hear a word because the word is what changes my circumstance and my situation and i understand what y'all say you know i can run around the church seven times and things will change but i don't run around the church seven times it's still the same with the dog on the same way and so i need a word that's going to change my life and i believe that when that word comes it changes your life am I talking to the wrong people at the wrong time about the wrong thing at the wrong place huh? the word will change your life it's just like you know we talked about this on last week remember we talked about um, Abraham and Sarah I think we talked about Abraham and Sarah on last week how they, they were barren but you know what changed their status what changed them they got a word the word told them they was about to have a baby and as soon as they got a word that they was about to have a baby everything changed okay and see you got and when, once you get a word I don't care if your situation is barren once he speaks a word everything changes Huh? If he speaks a word over your money, your money will change. Speak, Lord, thy servant listening. Huh? If he speak a word over your money, your money changes. He speak a word over your body, your body, your health changes. If he speak a word over your family, your family changes. That's why, that's why, if you will, we never allow the devil to punk us out. That's why when things are not going the way that they ought to be going, we get on our knees and pray. And we pray and say, God, we need you to speak. God, we need you to say something. We need you to show up. We need you to show me a word. Give, let somebody preach something. Let somebody say something in order for things to change. Because if I don't get a word, God, things are not going to be any different and things are not going to change. And as soon as God speaks, that's when things begin to turn around praise the lord i'm so excited and so 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 hebrews 4 and 12 i'm going very quickly i need to get up out of here hebrews 4 and 12 another verse that we used on this morning i want you to see it hebrews 4 and 12 go there very quickly we're talking about word power you got to see this is good this is kind of word power headquarters right here word power headquarters um hebrews 4 and 12 it says there new living translation for the word of god is alive and powerful just the a clause of it listen to the a clause of it for the word of god is alive and powerful alive and powerful i, I mentioned that 
that same A clause out of seven different translations, the American Standard Version says that the, the word is living and active. The word is living and active. Then we looked at it out the Amplified Bible. I love the Amplified Bible. It says, for the word that God speaks is alive and full of power, full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. The Holman Christian Bible says, for the word of God is living and effective. And so you got to understand that, that, that what we decided is that the word of God is alive, it's powerful, it's active, it's operative, it's energizing, and it is effective. The word of God is effective. By the way, anytime that you hear a word, you got to know that the word of God is effective. Don't be fooled. Don't sit around some of these church folk and they tell you after you hear God say something to you and speak to you, they try to tell you it's not going to work for you. No, baby, the word of God is effective. When anytime that God speaks the things, he does not speak a thing just to say it, to entertain us, but God is determined to bring about what he says. And as we said on this morning, the word of God works for us. I've all, I always have a word that's working in my favor. I always got a word that's working on my circumstance. I always got a word that's working on my situation. I always got a word. You know why I always got a word? Because the Bible tells us, and now we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and all the called according to his purpose. And so you always got to know that your word is working for you. Tell somebody tell them your word is working for you huh yeah your word of blessing is working for you your word of prosperity is working for you your word of healing is working for you your word of breakthrough is working for you your word of promotion is working for you I, oh y'all like that one huh okay your word of i might as well say it see when you find something folk like you might as well say it again your word of promotion is working for you it just makes you feel good in his uh, it is it's working for you now now are there forces working against you absolutely you got to know that as soon as you get a word forces of the demon demonic forces will work against you to try to hinder the word that God has placed over your life but see baby you got to know that you know that you know that you know that the word of God that you received into your spirit is more powerful than the forces that are against you though the enemy rise up against me they stumble and fall is there anybody listening to me see that's the type of word that I believe that when I got a word over my life yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me is there anybody here that's got a word that's working for you Okay, I got excited. I'm sorry. And so there's a word that's working for me. And I appreciate the, 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 that, that there is word power. There is power in the word that is working for me. That's bringing me to the place where God would have me to be. And when you got the word spoken over your life, there is no devil in hell that can stop what God has planned to do for you. As a matter of fact, do you know why the church has survived over these 2,000 and more years that we have survived? Do you know why we survived? You have no idea, huh? Well, let me tell you why we survived. It's because Jesus spoke a word about the church. Jesus said, check this out upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so has the gates of hell has hell tried to bring us down absolutely has hell tried to take us out absolutely has hell tried to defeat us absolutely but did it work absolutely not why because there's a word spoken over the church that the gates of hell will not prevail against us so push somebody and tell them you ain't going down Excuse me, I feel so excited in my sanctified bone. You are not going down. Why? Because there's a word that says that hell will not prevail against you. Now, everybody that's a part of the church, throw your hands up and give them a praise up in here. Excuse me, I got excited. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. And, and, and so, and so we, we, we've got a word over our life and the word is alive it's powerful it's alive it's powerful it's active it's active it's operative it's energizing it's energizing and the word is effective now when david the songwriter of 119 writes this about him being in the dust it's very interesting if you take a moment and study it out and i don't have time to give you all the, the theology of it but but when you when you look at it he, he's really not talking about if you will he's really not talking about that, that he's just in a simple struggle he, he he he's pointing to the fact that 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 it, it, 
it, he's reminded of the brokenness the brokenness that comes from humanity's fallen state you know because all of us all of us deal with the brokenness that comes from human humanity's fallen state because all of us are born in sin and shaped and in iniquity yeah we're saved and sanctified holy ghost feeling we're talking in tongues now but if the truth be told can we tell the truth in the building can we can we tell the truth in the building there, there's still some things that we that we struggle with and and that we're we, we're going to overcome that that we're going uh-huh yeah yeah and, 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 and so and so he's still and so when he's talking about being in the dust that's what he's talking about he's talking about being there and, and he finds himself struggling with the effects that flow from the fallen state or the broken state that we were in but but the answer the answer he understand lies in the word of god because he says i lie here in the dust but if i just get a word i can be revived again can i can i can i preach to somebody if you don't mind me i know some of y'all don't want to see people recover but can i preach to somebody who, who it may maybe was had a fall or maybe you, you had a bad incident or maybe you did something wrong against god or, or maybe whatever uh, don't be concerned about the church folk that want to keep you in bondage uh, 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 let me preach a word to you to let you know that one word can revive you and put you back in your place now I know some of y'all Sadiddy church folk didn't want me to tell nobody that and you would rather for them to sit there and now not be able to ever give God a praise again or ever teach nobody nothing again or all that kind of stuff but if that was the qualifier then you need to sit down too how you like me now huh if that was the qualifier none of us would have a microphone if that was the qualifier nobody be singing in the choir if that was the choir fire we wouldn't have no musicians because the bible lets us know that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of god but thanks be unto god that the bible says that if we confess our fault that he's faithful and just oh you might not forgive me but i got a god that will forgive me and he'll send a word and revive you Oh, is there anybody in here beside me that ever messed some stuff up, ever did some stuff wrong, but you got a word from God that revived your soul? You ought to give God a praise for it right there in the face of the devil. Did, did I just, did I, did it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I got excited. You may maybe see it, please and, and And so. And, and, and so we come out of the dust we, we come out of the dust Tell somebody say we come out of the dust uh, we, can't, we can't stay in the dust because the word is too powerful to keep us in the dust uh -huh, no no we can't stay in, de in despair because the word is too powerful to keep us in despair no 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 we can't stay melancholy because the word is too powerful uh -huh, to keep us melancholy no 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 we cannot just stay in depression because the word of god is too powerful to keep us in depression no 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 we can't stay in our problem because the word of god preached over your life is too powerful to allow you to stay no 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 you cannot stay in your circumstance because the word of god is just too powerful and no 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 you can't stay in your sin because the word of god is just too powerful to allow allow you to stay there is there anybody understand what I'm saying here is it can I get about 17 witnesses that say I got your preacher okay uh, yeah because, because because there was stuff can, can I can I be transparent and can I demask us if you will there, 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 there. she always using my stuff I thought I'll use some of hers um that there is some that there, there has been some stuff you know that I didn't want to be delivered from y'all don't want me to talk now there, I thought y'all said I could Damascus there was some stuff I didn't want to be delivered from I didn't mind coming to church and praising the Lord I didn't I didn't mind coming to church and praying I didn't mind doing this Holy Ghost stuff that y'all were doing but when I went to my own place there was some stuff that I wanted to hold on to but I found out something baby that the more I stayed around the word the more I stayed in the church and heard the preached message the more I got delivered from stuff that I didn't want to give up can I get a witness in the building know what I'm talking about Let me... so so be seated so your status is changing because one word from God will change your status y'all trying to preach my message I wasn't going to say everything I was going to say <laughs> your status so I'm alive today because of the word oh 
Oh yeah, I'm allowed. You, you, I'm allowed today because of the word. Yeah, devil tried to kill me, but I'm allowed today because of the word. He said, "Ye shall live and not die." and declare the works of the Lord and so when I'm here the reason why I'm still here because I'm still declaring some works that's why you ought to always be telling somebody about what Jesus is doing because it qualifies you to be a here a little bit longer on the earth so I shall live and not die and let me tell you what the Lord has done tell somebody tell them you better learn how to talk about Jesus huh because when you talk about Jesus how much time did I have to preach? When you talk about Jesus, it qualifies you to stay here. When you talk about Jesus, it causes the devil to not have to get on your back. When you talk, declare the work. He saved me. He delivered me. He brought me out. He brought me over. Somebody ought to learn how to declare the work of the Lord. Look at somebody and tell them one thing the Lord's done for you. Tell them, tell them. I said one thing. I said one thing. Some of y'all went into two, three, and four. I can't tell you all of this stuff. You don't know like I know what the Lord is. I can't explain all the hell I've been through. I can't explain all the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows. But let me simply put it to you like this. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here right now. So that's why I praise him like I do. Somebody throw your hands up and give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. I got to skip some of this. I got to skip some of this. Sit down. Sit down. Let me skip some of this. Let me skip some of this. It's a series. I'll get back to it. It's power in that word. Somebody ought to shout, preach, preacher. <laughs> yeah, that's power in the word, baby. Thank God for the word. Now, understand this. Let me take about 10 more of your minutes. I'll let you go. It's almost kickoff time. Now, let me... You ain't that spiritual looking at me like that. The word, listen to this. The word is not a thing that dies or is forgotten as soon as it is uttered. But the word continues and it lives. There have been things that were spoken over you as a child growing up in church that's still alive today in the mind of God. Oh, you better have caught what I just now said is still alive in the mind of God there are some things that God told your mama about you that's still alive in the mind of God and even though you might not be in the season of fulfillment the season of fulfillment is soon to come why because God has not forgotten what has been spoken about you as a, oh my shot there are some promises over your life that God spoke to you about in the wee hours of the morning that you may have forgotten about but they're yet fresh in the mind of God so check this out check this out let me give you some scripture and then I'm gonna get out of here let me give you some scripture let me give you some scripture Isaiah 40 in verse 8 let me give you some scripture I got to get up out of here I got to move I got to move Isaiah 40 and 8 thank you Jesus hallelujah L listen to this scripture Isaiah the 40th chapter verse 8 New Living Translation the grass withers and the flowers fade but don't you dare put the word in the same category but the word of our God stands forever okay well well God said this about me back in 1984 and it has not come to pass as of yet are you telling me that word still stands absolutely the same word go ahead get your praise on girl the same word still stands God does not alter the thing that comes out of his mouth if God said it he will make it good so yes the word still stands I 
almost shouted off of that one. There is no time stamp on God's word. You are not too old. You didn't miss it. It's not beyond you. It's still in the mind of God. And whatever is in the mind of God, God is going to manifest it here on earth. So baby, you might as well get ready for a manifestation. You might as well get, get ready to show up because God is going to do what he said. The word stands. You know, sometimes what people will do is, is, is for instance, in, in a judgment situation, they will, after someone has rendered a judgment, they will go back for an appeal of the judgment that has been rendered. But one time, what, what sometimes, what the, what the person who is the mediator will do, it will let them know that whatever was established in the beginning is the verdict that's going to stand now. Well, what I'm trying to tell you about God is that what God said to you in the beginning is still the verdict that stands now. Although you may have messed up some stuff, God says I ain't changing the verdict. Excuse me. Excuse me. Even though you may have messed up and even though you might be frustrated and even though things may not be working the way that you, you thought that they ought to work, God still says that the verdict still stands. So if I called you to be, you're going to be. If I called you to do, you're going to do. If I called you to become, you're going to become. The verdict still stands. I don't care how far away you are from it, the verdict still stands. Somebody ought to give God a praise for that right there. I'm skipping some more. I'm skipping some more. I'm skipping some more. Ha! It's standing. We still going to build the church. Cause the word still stands. They don't even want to sell the land. That's all right. The word still stands. See, that's the type of mentality that you gotta have. When God says you're gonna get promoted, and you go in there and tell, and they tell you there are no positions for promotion, you gotta walk out of there and say, "Hold up, I don't, I don't care what they say. The word still stands." And I don't know who, how God gonna work it out, but God must be getting ready to promote somebody out of my position because God told me that I was going to get promoted and I don't know how we're going to do it but look out here I come because God is not a man that he should lie come on preach it with me now neither the son of man that he should repent if God said it he going to make it so somebody moving look at somebody tell them somebody moving I don't know who it is and none of my business but somebody moving Because God promised me. I didn't miss God on this one. I know that I know that I know that I know I know that I heard from God. And not only did I hear from him, he's been confirming this thing over and Anybody got some confirmation going on? He's been confirming this thing over and over. Seems like I can't even get away from it. Every time I try to get away, here come the word catching up to me again. Reminding me, it's getting ready to turn. It's getting ready to work. It's getting ready to be different. Oh my God, let me skip something. Let me skip something. Let me skip something. I'm skipping some more. I'm skipping some more, okay? Um, go to Psalm 33, verse 6. I'm skipping some more. First lady, I'm going to skip some more, okay? Huh? I don't have on my glasses. I can't see what you're saying. Okay. You know I'll come over there to hear what you got to say. Psalm 33 and 6. There are some things that God wants you to know that he's going to create for you. My God, my God, my God. God's getting ready to create some things for you. Anybody, anybody crazy enough? Anybody crazy enough? I was talking to, to one of my elders on this week, and we were in a conversation, and he's dealing with a, a sickness in his body that they say is incurable. Now, I know y'all think I'm a foolish preacher, but I'm believing that the season that I'm preaching this word that God will create... Y'all don't, don't want to talk. I'm believing that God can create a healing to create within the minds of the doctors 
how to deal with this thing in order for it to be. I ain't got nobody talking to me. I don't have nobody talking to me. But God is a creative God. And God is able to create whatever is necessary in order to deal with your situation. Don't make me tell my testimony. Y'all don't make me tell my testimony. Don't make me. No. No, don't make me. Don't make me tell it. Don't make me tell it. Don't make me tell it. Y'all, let's look. My wife like, no, we don't heard this for 50 years. <laughs> okay, I ain't gonna tell it anyway. All right, um, they said tell it, huh? When I got out the military, had no job. They created, created, yes sir, created a position for me. Uh, Y'all listening to me? I, I don't care if you go and they say we don't have no position. You ought to tell them well, create one for me, because I serve a God that is a creative God. And you need me here because there's an anointing on my life that will change this entire business. There's an anointing in my life that will change this entire business and every business around it. And you need me up in here because you know you got folk that are not working for you and they're not doing what needs to be done. But as soon as I get in here, everything in this business is going to turn around. As a matter is there anybody in here anointed? Is anybody here anointed? I guarantee you, within three months, everything in here is going to turn around because I showed up. <laughs> Baby, I got word on my life. I've been under the influence of the word of God. Everything in here is going to turn around within three months because I showed up. Okay, y'all sit down because y'all are going, well, there's no way that that can happen. Well, apparently, apparently, you don't read your Bible. Everywhere Joseph showed up, within weeks it turned around. Huh? Show up at Potiphar's house, it turns around. Shows up in the prison, prison turns around. Shows up in Pharaoh's house, the entire nation turns around. Why? Because Joseph showed up. Y'all gonna have to forgive me. You're gonna have to forgive me. But I've got enough confidence to know that when I show up, because all the word that's on my life, everything gonna turn around because I'm here now. Look at somebody tell them I'm here now. Y'all don't want me to preach to y'all. Let me preach to him. When y'all get to Richmond, Virginia, when y'all go there and bring that word to Richmond, Virginia, that entire city has the capacity to turn around. Why? Because you show up with a word of God that's on your life. Somebody ought to praise him in here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe y'all don't know. Maybe y'all don't know. They get ready to go to Richmond, Virginia and start a church in Richmond, Virginia. How many of y'all believe that when they get there, because of the word that's on their life, Richmond get ready to have a revival. Lord have mercy. So check this out. Check this out in my closing. My first of three. Check this out. Psalm 33, verse 6. Did I tell y'all we were going there yet? Okay, good. Psalm 33, verse 6. Check this out. I'm closing, y'all. I got to get up out of here. Psalm 33, verse 6. Y'all good? Y'all there? You there? It says, listen to this. The Lord merely spoke. I like that. He merely spoke and the heavens were created. In other words, the Lord didn't work to make the heavens come. All he did was speak. It's not going to be a struggle. Oh! It's not going to be a struggle. All God's going to do is speak. And when he speaks, something's going to be created. Huh? Opportunities are going to be created because the Lord speaks. God's going to create, oh my God, don't me let me go prophet. God's going to create an opportunity for someone in here to meet someone that has the ability to set you up for the business that you've been thinking about. Okay, no, y'all don't want to hear this, but I'm, if I'm preaching to myself, God, let me be preaching to myself. God's about to create an opportunity for you to meet somebody that has enough money to set you up for what you are getting ready to do. God says, when I create the opportunity, make sure I get the glory. Because if I get the glory, whatever is in their pockets is in your pockets. 
the Lord merely spoke. Somebody ought to say, speak, Lord. Uh, this is word power right here. The Lord merely spoke and the heavens were created. He just said, let there be. And all of a sudden, whatever he said, let there be, it happened. Let there be light. Light happens. Let there be stars. Stars happen. Let there be the sun. Sun come. Let there be the moon. Moon come. Let there be fouls in the air. Boom. They just show. Let there be healing. See? You went with the harder of the two options. You went with me when I said, let there be sun. Sun came. Let there be stars. Stop. Don't you? But now listen to this because this is not the harder one let there be healing let there be blessing let there be prosperity let there be promotion let there be you understand when he says let there be then whatever he says let there be it comes Okay, let me finish this verse. Let me finish this verse. He said, uh, he, 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 the Lord merely spoke in the heaven was created. He breathed the word and all the stars were born. If I was an evangelist to preach, I'd preach a message called a star is born. Look at somebody beside you. Say, you sitting beside a star. <laughs> you couldn't handle that, could you? You couldn't handle that. I know you couldn't handle that. I know you couldn't handle that. I know, I know you couldn't. But, but because he breathed on me, a star is born. Come on now. You know we don't qualify for what we do. Huh? Come on now. You know we don't qualify for what we do. Some of us up in here, we, we don't qualify to be no preachers. We don't qualify to be no deacons. We don't qualify to be on them. But we, a star is born. Well, why are we stars now, if you will? It's because he breathed on us. Last thing I want to read. I'm skipping some more. I'm skipping some more. I'm skipping some more. Last thing I want to read. I got to read this. this uh, by the way, this, this is the introductory messages for what I'm going to be talking about, okay? Isaiah 55. I'm going to be talking about this for a couple of weeks. Isaiah 55. I got to read this. Got to read this. Word power. Power. The word. Word power. Your word is on assignment. Your word is on assignment. You got to read this. You, I would be less than a preacher if I don't read this today. Isaiah 55. Verse number 10 and 11. The rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. Check this out. It is the same with my word. It is the same. Wait a minute. Maybe I need to read. Well, maybe I read verse 10 too quick. Let me go back to verse 10. The rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing, producing, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. Verse 11, it is the same with my word. I send it out, and listen to this, and it always produces fruit. I send out my word, and my word always, everybody say always, it always produces fruit. My word. The word this is word power right here my word always produces fruit every time you hear the word it produces fruit in your life let me say it to you again every time you hear the word it produces fruit in your life that's the reason why some of the hardest people to talk to is people that don't come to church I'm talking about people that have been in church all of a sudden they stop going to church they're some of the hardest people to talk to why because they have they have no word left in them that's able to produce fruit for them at that season that's why I don't care what you're going through you got to keep coming to church because every time you hear a word it produces fruit in your life and the reason why I didn't slap some people the reason why you didn't cuss somebody out that deserved to be cussed out I'm not talking, you ever, never mind. The reason why is because there's a word in your life that's producing fruit in your life. And sometimes you got to learn how to say, God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word that's keeping me. 
thank you for your word that's helping me you don't know the word helps you like that David said that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you baby the word keeps you from cussing somebody out if you didn't have any word you wouldn't be able to do what the Bible said the Bible said those that despitefully use you you got to bless them well how do you bless them you bless them by speaking the word if you don't have any word you ain't gonna bless them you're gonna curse them you going okay so he says my word always produces always produces well Lord you said this I don't see anything it's it's all it's producing remember you gotta you gotta remember what he said in verse 10 he gives seed to the farmer oh oh I'm I've been missing it I've been waiting for the fruit and I missed the seed he's been producing seed in order for me to sow in order for me to have the fruit oh I've been missing it the word has been giving me some seed in order for me to sow it into my life in order for produce for me to produce the fruit that's necessary for me to be and become and do what God would have me to do and I've been looking for the big thing but I'm missing the small thing because you know how we are in the church we want the big thing but we don't want the small thing give me the apple but I don't want the seed but in order to have a consistent supply of apples that you don't have to labor for and work for you got to put the seed in the ground yourself and the reason why you always need somebody to pray for you and lay hands on you and spit on you and oil you up because you ain't doing nothing with your seed it always produces but you got to understand when he says it produces fruit he's also talking about the seed that brings about the fruit you got to remember that then it says this and I'm done it's done there. he says it will accomplish all I want it to my God Jesus I'm about to have a Holy Ghost conniption he says the word is going to accomplish everything I want it to accomplish you mean that everything yes everything everything that God wants to accomplish in my life by the word of God he's going to accomplish that so if he said I'm supposed to go to, to Carnegie Hall and preach to 10,000 folk, guess what God's going to accomplish that well do you know anybody in Carnegie Hall absolutely not God knows everybody there though and God will put my name on somebody's mind that don't even know me. They'll do a people search on the internet and find me. Y'all ain't ready to hear nothing here. Huh? God has a way to get the blessing into your life. Everything that God sends the word to do, God says, I'm accomplishing it and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Everywhere I send the word, it's going to prosper. That's the power of the word, man. That's the, did y'all understand that? That's the power of the word. Everywhere you go, you're going to prosper because you got the word over you. We're going to have to start you at the bottom. We're going to have to start you at the bottom. Oh, really? Okay. That's all right. I ain't going to be at the bottom very long because I got word over my life. Word, word don't keep me at the bottom. Word always moves me up. And when I get in here and start acting professional and doing the stuff that God gave me to do and you see the anointing on my life, you're going to start asking some of the other folk there would they go find another job because there's, because I, I can't stay at the bottom he told me I'm the head and I'm not the tail y'all ain't saying nothing to me see some of y'all don't have word on your life I got word on my life look at somebody tell them I got word on my life in the King James Version thank you thank you James just give me some in the King James Version it says this it says that my word will not return unto me void in other words my word ain't coming back to me empty it ain't coming back to me see what the word has to do is got to report back to the father and tell the father what happened to you now if the father says that you're supposed to be a multi-millionaire and the word comes back to the father and says he doesn't have a dime then that word comes back void but he says the word cannot come back void if he said that you're supposed to be a preacher the word can't go back to the father and say well I just couldn't get him to be a preacher oh you're going to get him to be a preacher because my word don't come back void Amen. did you hear me listen to this listen to this listen to this your word said you're supposed to be holy the word goes to the father and says well they're not holy the, God sends the word right back and says well you're going to accomplish it until they get holy 
That's why I speak over every life. You're going to be what God called you to be. You're going to be holy. You're going to be what God, yeah. Because the word ain't going, see, if you would stop making it about yourself and making it about the word that's over your life, then you will start seeing the word accomplished what the father sent it to do. So whatever the word is that God sends into your life, he says it's not going to return back unto me void, but it's going to accomplish whatever I please for it to accomplish. Are you listening to me at all? You got a word over your life. This is what I'm going to be preaching about over the next couple of weeks. This is just the introduction, okay? Introduction. You know, you always go to the class. They always give you the introductory class, okay? Don't worry. There ain't going to be no test today. When you come back, we will have a pop quiz. Mm -hmm. but, the, 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 but there's a word over you. There's a word over you. Some of y'all have been here for years. You've been hearing me preaching the word. There's got to be a word over you. There's got to be a word over you. God wants to bring to pass some things. He's working some things for you. There's a word over your life. Come on and stand with me. Come on, stand with me. I'm going to give you one practical thing to do. I want to give you one practical thing to do. And then we're going to pray. Here's the practical thing I want you to do. I want you to read the Bible as if God is speaking to you. Because he is. Because he is. Read the Bible as if God is speaking to you because he is. There's a word over your life. God's going to bring that word to pass. Here's the thing that as, as I want to pray for you. First of all, thank you, Holy Father. Don't leave because I might be getting ready to say something to you. There are six people here right now. Six people here right now. There's a word over your life about you being saved, you being a part of the kingdom, you being a part of what God is doing here on the earth. You working in the church and you doing things in the church and you are not fulfilling your word. You are not fulfilling your word. Six of you are here right now. I want to encourage you today that as I open up this altar that you would come here to this altar right now and you get your life right with God today because the word that God has over your life God's going to get that word out of your life okay God's going to get that word out of your life and he is determined to get it out of your life so you know God has spoken about you and said some things about you even at a young age that you're supposed to be saved in, in a man of God or a woman of God or whatever whatever it is listen to me I want you to come right now from where you're standing and I want you to come and meet me right here at this altar and I guarantee you I guarantee you the fulfillment of the word that's on your life begins to come to pass right here today I need y'all to clap a little bit better as they come come on come on yeah just gonna respond to it 